How to Survive the Great Reset Number 4. And Tana Mogo lied, and Francesca Farrago is hot. Okay, and a shameless plug to grab people's attention, I will throw in images of Francesca Farrago. Wow, yeah, she is the Netflix star you've never heard of, but you'd like to. <laughs> okay, so anyhow, uh, forgive me if I show you images of Francesca as we talk about the latest topic. I learned something going to garage sales this weekend. I want to pass it on to you. But I guess before we get to that, I we should talk about uh, Tana Mogo because she's all these years she's claimed to be 22 years old and I know you don't know who this girl is and neither do I but she's part of the tribe you know David Copperfield the Henry Kissingers the Jared Kushners the people who lie and it never seems to ever surprise me when I when I find out that these people lie about something she lied about her wedding to Jake Paul big publicity scam and now we've we find out she's not 22 years old. She's usually, she's a 30-year-old, probably divorcee. But what really troubles me is these people get on YouTube and these, they're basically run, but they're managed by Hollywood people and they're trained to lie. But what really irks me is she is begging for the government handout. You know, the taxpayers have to come up with these trillions and trillions of dollars because of this Rona collapse, okay? That money's coming out of our pocket. And you got these Hollywood liars, just out and out liars. They have no shame. They're, they're shameless. They're, and they're going to beg the government for taxpayer money. I mean, it's a scam. Beyond, but we, so I, I guess I should throw that in there before we get to the main story. And what is the main story? As always, how are we going to survive? You see, you and I, we don't look like Francesca. No, we don't have legs like that. And on the flip side, we don't have the connections that Henry Kissinger and Jake Paul and Tana Mogo there on the left. We don't have her connections to the international banking cabal. So again, I mean, if I had legs like that, trust me, I'd be a millionaire. But let me, but this is, let me get a hold of myself. How are we going to survive the Great Reset? And I come, like I said, I went to a few garage sales this weekend found out something I didn't really know, so I'm going to share it with you, pass it on. Okay, the best sales you can go to. When you're out there looking for garage sales, remember this. The best sales to go to are always the sales by the people who buy storage units, okay? The storage unit buyers, because they, they buy so much shit that they have to move a lot of stuff, and they have to move their inventory quickly, and if you, you must sell at a very good price. I mean, this is just a fact. So always consider yourself lucky if you go to a sale where you know that they got a bunch of stuff, they're storage unit buyers, you know, you know you're going to get some good prices. But this is what I found out that I want to share. Okay, so I went to two sales this weekend and uh, I went to a lot of sales, but out of the, all the sales I went to, two of them were by people who buy storage units and they both told me the same thing. Turns out in the last few months, I don't know, this might be going back more than a few months, maybe five or six months, uh, things have gotten crazy where, you know, where they go to buy the storage unit. Uh, it turns out that all those Americans who lost their jobs over the last few months, some of them have decided to uh, take the free government handout stimulus money and go buy storage units to resell. So they tell me that a, a regular $40 unit has now been bid up to $300. I mean, wow, then they, they got, one of the guys said, calm down, newbies. I mean, so they're new, they're new people. They used to have a job, you know, I don't know where, maybe at a restaurant or they were a waiter or worked in the corporation. And anyhow, you remember those storage unit uh, wars, the, the TV show? That also kind of bid up this, uh, the storage unit game, those TV shows. And that's why I don't personally go buy storage units because because of the storage war, those reality TV shows, I think that they were overbidding for these storage units, and that goes back years now. But now what's really crazy, what I've learned, and what I want to pass on, is now it's even gotten worse. In the last, well, going back to, I don't know, April, probably took a couple months before they got their government handout money, 
And they decided, again, you know, they're going to take that government money, go buy a storage unit and resell it and try to survive. I mean, I like their idea, but the problem is if so many people have this free government handout money and they're bidding up a, a $40 unit that's going to go to $300, I mean, you're not, you're not going to be able to make money that way, right? I mean, so eventually all, you know, a lot of people will lose. You know, you, when you overbid on a storage unit, if you bid $400 on it and you only make $50 back, I mean, finally, you, you st those losers are going to say, oh, that's stupid. I'm not going to do that no more. And, and finally, it'll probably calm down. But I just needed to let you know that if you uh, don't think about going to buy a storage unit right now because they're probably bidding it too high. So if we're going to survive this great reset, you and I, we have to be smarter than the Tana Mogos who lie to separate you from your money. No, we want to do it the fair way. We we'll buy something and we resell it for a profit. Have you ever seen these champion juicers? I found one of these this, this weekend. Uh, they can go on eBay for $100 easy. $80 to $100 on eBay if they're working good. Probably give it away on Craigslist for 50 bucks. So you want to buy them for under 20 uh, the end under that bag there, that's a, a sewing machine. Sewing machines are hot right now. Make sure they work and make sure they have all the parts. I've been finding sewing machines, but they don't have the power cords to them, and that's a problem. Uh, anything Buddha, you got the uh, porcelain Buddhas, anything Asian. Remember, we've talked about that before. Try to pick up Asian stuff. They're hot. And um, liquor glasses, if you buy a bunch of them. Everything, it's how much you pay for the item. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, did you buy any copper or brass this weekend? Remember, if you see a, a teapot, it's nice it has a bunch of dents on it. Because if it has dents on it, you can pick up that copper and brass cheaper. So you want to pick up all your copper and brass items really, really cheap. And uh, malachite. Oh, that's a nice brass uh, frog there. Now, sometimes the brass will sell more as a piece of artwork. But if it doesn't sell as a piece of artwork, the brass is brass. It's copper and we need to collect it. Uh, don't forget about jewelry. Jewelry is really, uh, you can pick up, I picked up this nice uh, malachite uh, necklace. It's a gemstone. Picked it up for a dollar. You, you know, you can try to sell that for twenty, thirty, forty dollars. Some of them go for over a hundred dollars. Uh, gemstones, always be on the lookout for jewelry. I, you like my pink uh, turntable? <laughs> hey, I buy what I can find. I don't care. Uh, anything religious, you know, religious, old religious crosses from uh, you know, 1960s, they're tough, they're hot, they're hot, old man. I mean, I'm just going to try to teach you, we're going to have to be smart. You have to, you got to buy this stuff really cheap. If you're going to buy these used helmets, try to pick them up for $5, these used uh, helmets and anything. I mean, you, if you're going to make it in the Great Reset, you got to be cheap. You got to buy it as cheap as possible because if you overpay for it, you're going to be stuck for it. You take a loss. Hey, I think that's enough for today. Um, I'll leave you with one last shot of those legs. And I mean those, those legs, huh? Yeah.